walk it like I talk it. Dude, walk it like I talk it. Dude, walk it like I talk it. Dude, quit it. Just listen to some of this and it'll blow that trash music right out of your head. Take what you want Wait, wait. I will be just fine. Oh man, that's like the best part. I think your song just put me to sleep. Man, you have no taste in music. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Legend Me TV, where legends go for music discussion, comedy, and more. And today, we're back for part two of the complete Maroon 5 discography review. Today, we are covering the sophomore album from Maroon 5, their big comeback after five years of songs about Jane. And this one is titled, It Won't Be Soon Before Long. Much like I've had a special history with songs about Jane, I've also had a special history with this album. This is the first album I've actually owned on vinyl. It's the first album I've actually ever gotten. It just holds some very special memories with me, and I'm about to go into detail on why. Here's what the record looks like, by the way, if you were curious. It Won't Be Soon Before Long, released in May of 2007, I believe, and was fronted by a huge single. Makes Me Wonder was Maroon 5's first ever number one hit, and... Arguably so, it's one of the catchiest, and it actually had a pop rock tone to it and still contained Maroon 5's rock sound. And that stays all throughout It Won't Be Soon Before Long. We see a bit of a different sound, a change in sound for these guys, and some people weren't so fond of it. I know the record was generally positively received, but I do know some people were kind of like, hmm, this doesn't sound quite like the Maroon 5 from Songs About Jane, and they were just kind of thrown off by the change. And I will admit, this album is a little more on the mainstream kind of side. This is kind of like, oh, that pop rock that was very radio friendly at the time. There's a lot of radio friendly sounding songs on here. But do I think that's a bad thing? No, not really. I actually think these hits are definitely worthy of being hits. And I definitely think this is another great release for Maroon 5. Yes, I love this album probably just as much as Songs About Jane, but for definitely different reasons. Honestly, I kind of like the new polished sounding Maroon 5. I honestly think they're... They really took all their strengths as a band and really just refined them and just made it really something to admire on the new album. We begin with If I Never See Your Face Again, a song that would later go on to be remixed by Rihanna. However, I really don't care for that version because they really overproduced the heck out of it. And also, Rihanna makes the track sound rather annoying, which I love Adam's vocals and it pains me that they took off half of them just to have Rihanna on there. And I'm just like, man, that's a shame. Because the original track is freaking awesome, honestly. I love like the interrogative tone of the melody and, and I, I love that chorus too. Adam Levine sings, if I never see your face again, I don't mind because we've gone much farther than I thought we'd get tonight. And I'm just like, wow. I'm like, you know what? That's good, man, because at least you won't feel all whiny and depressy because it's like, wow, you got what you came for. <laughs> and yeah, overall, it starts the album off on a fun vibe. There's a really fun little guitar part, and overall, Adam sounds flawless on this really memorable and fun track. Definitely a really good pop rock tune. Moving on from there, we have the previously noted single, Makes Me Wonder, which, as I said, hit number one in the summer of 2007 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was their first of three so far number one hits. And they've also had several top 10 hits, a few songs that were close to making number one but didn't quite make it. It is definitely a memorable, fun, and catchy tune as well. And that chorus will definitely get stuck in your head. And also, it has a great bridge. And then the next up, we have Little of Your Time, which actually comes in a little rougher and also features these cool little funky pop sounds in the chorus, which I really love, honestly. A lot of people were like, mmm, sell out. No, I, I'm like, hold up. No, honestly, I think... You know, it's just the right amount of like electronic poppy noises that I think really complements the music instead of really ruining it, ruining it or calling it sellout music. Honestly, I think the track is freaking catchy as heck. I love Adam Levine's attitude throughout the whole thing and especially on that bridge is so awesome. That's one thing, the bridges on this album are freaking fantastic. A lot of the bridges on here are just so amazing. I think they're actually some of the better parts of this record even more than the actual songs. I'm just like, wow. Like, these bridges are fantastic. We're going to be coming up on a few that are some of my favorite things Maroon 5 have ever done. But before that, we have to go on to Wake Up Call. Honestly, this is a this is a pretty fun, more of a darker, more bleak, rockier tone for Maroon 5. And although they never really get too hard, too heavy, you know what I mean? They never really get too crazy. It's still just kind of a more dark and just, yeah, kind of a weird tone for these guys. But yeah, in general, I really enjoy the track too. But seriously, there's lyrics about Adam Levine literally shooting somebody. He literally killed him. 
Okay. But yeah, next we come to the first of many ballads coming up. This one is called Won't Go Home Without You. It's a really guitar-ridden piece, reminiscent of a song like Every Breath You Take by Sting and the Police. It really kind of has those guitar-ridden melodies and progressions that really remind me a lot of that song. In a good way, though. I don't really think it's quite a rip-off, but yeah, Maroon 5's biggest influence is one of them is the police, in fact. So yeah, it kind of makes sense that the track would kind of want to sound like this. But anyways, yeah, it's a ballad. But yeah, honestly, it's a really dark and kind of depressing tune, but it's kind of like about how when you mess up with your girl and unfortunately you just kind of want to make things right. And yeah, it's honestly kind of a rather somber tune. And I wish, you know, Adam would kind of like not get so egotistical in the head. I know, I know he knows he's awesome and he knows he's great looking and all, but I just, I kind of love tunes like this that really make, you know, that really show his more sensitive side, show his more, well, he can make mistakes, he can, you know, mess up, he's not perfect, which definitely show on this track. And up next, we have Nothing Lasts Forever, another ballad on this album, and it's actually a really elegant and beautiful sounding one. Honestly, the tingling acoustic guitars on this track, and Adam Levine's really haunting, really calm delivery. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate track about a relationship just falling apart and knowing that nothing really lasts forever and that's kind of a shame and it hurts but the best thing the only way is to break up and yeah it can be kind of sad it can be hard but nothing will last forever that's sad but true following that we have the absolute banger can't stop i think this song is really great this song yeah starts out with a bang and the chorus is absolutely awesome and also, the bridge is the second best bridge on this entire album, I think. Yeah, the song is basically about what the title entitles. It's basically about when you have a huge crush on a girl and you just cannot stop thinking about them. And the bridge has lines like, what I would give to have you look in my direction, and then how he would give his life to attract her attention. And... You know, that's pretty relatable. I could see people like that really relating to this song. And in general, it's just a fantastic tune also, not even just with the lyrics, but also in production. Because the song just sounds freaking awesome. And it's one of the rockier moments too. It sounds almost like a punk rock track. Coming up next, we have another ballad, Good Night, Good Night, which this ballad is another kind of sleepier, kind of like more tuned back. But yeah, that's definitely not a bad thing, honestly. I think the ballads on here are actually really good. The production sounds well produced and well mixed here. I love Adam's more calm delivery. Yeah, the lyrics here are really sweet. The album just has a really sweet vibe to it. Then we get to my absolute favorite track here, Not Falling Apart. This one is something special, guys. I love how this track just transcends from its guitars into its incredible chorus. And then, oh my god, just these vocals across the chorus and eh, the pop sounds in the second verse. But best of all, this freaking bridge. My absolute favorite moment, yes, better than anything on Songs About Jane, my absolute favorite moment in a Maroon 5 song ever. Just this is fantastic, guys. If you don't check out a single Maroon 5 song, you know, by choice ever again, check out this one. All right, next up we have Kiwi, the 10th track on It Won't Be Soon Before Long, and Geez. This one is certainly interesting. On the surface, it kind of sounds like, you know, your standard run-of-the-mill Maroon 5 track. It's got those elements of pop, it's got those elements of rock, and, you know, you kind of have those heavy drums going in, and, you know, you kind of just have pretty much a run-of-the-mill song until you get to this freaking guitar solo that comes out of nowhere. And let me put it to you, this is the hardest right here Maroon 5 have ever rocked. Just listen to this. It's just a huge wave of like instruments and eclectic guitars and just, oh God, they're just, the drums and everything is going wild. I'm like, geez, Maroon 5, like, you know, way to step outside your comfort zone and just, geez, uh, you know? I'm like, that, that is easily one of those awesome moments on the whole record. And then we have the absolutely beautiful ballad, probably my favorite one here, called Better That We Break. It's just incredible. Another ballad saying, well, I know it's hard. It's really hard to break up, but it's just better that you choose that decision. It's better that we just end things because it's going to get worse and worse. It's going to get harder every day. A lyric in that song, by the way. And also... The second half of the track has this really good guitar part that comes along with the chorus too. 
And I'm just like, geez. Plus, it has another hauntingly beautiful bridge, which I just adore. God, the bridges on this album are phenomenal. And then we also end this album with Back at Your Door, another fun track, another cool ballad, which really sounds like Adam Levine is trying to get over a girl, but unfortunately, every time, he just winds up back at her door again. And yeah, that's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of like, yeah, that's kind of happens more often than you'd probably want or think to want. But anyways, yeah, guys, this album... It's definitely not maybe as unique as Songs About Jane. Like, that was kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime album. But in my opinion, this is just as good because this sounds like a perfectly executed and just an awesome sophomore effort and a really great follow-up to Songs About Jane. I am also going to give It Won't Be Soon Before Long a 10 out of 10. Definitely recommend both of these albums as I find them to be both some of the best pop rock albums of the 2000s. And yeah. That's my review for It Won't Be Soon For Long. And any other thoughts you have, comment them down below. Subscribe to my channel, like, comment. Definitely check out these first two albums from Maroon 5 because they're definitely, will, be, will go down as some pop classics.